Hey, hey, go ahead and grab cellular respiration part three and make sure you're writing on the notes and highlighting on the notes so we'll be sure that you watch the video. Okay, so before we even get started, I want to review cellular respiration really fast. So parts one and two, I'm just going to review them. So, um, you actually want to flip over your cellular respiration part three notes or grab another sheet of paper because I want to see you writing all of this for review. This will help you for cellular respiration. Just kind of putting it all together now. All right, so grab your notes. Cellular respiration. The whole thing. Okay, step one. I think if you can... See what the name of that step is. Step one is glycolysis. Step two is the Krebs cycle. And step three is the electron transport chain. So you want to know that. Glycolysis is the first step. The Krebs cycle is the second step. And the electron transport chain is the third step. Okay, so the first step is where we take six carbons in glucose. One, two, three. Well, let's make that straight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons in glucose. And we, okay, so those six dots represent the six carbons in glucose. So remember glucose is C6. H12O6. Okay, so glycolysis, look at the word. Glycolysis. We're going to take the sugar and we're going to break it. And that's all it is, is sugar break. So we take the sugar and we break it into two G3P molecules. And remember from photosynthesis, G3P is half of sugar. Hey, that's easy. We took sugar and we broke it apart. And now we have two half of sugars. That's easy. But the G3P, and I'll draw it for you, has three carbons. One, that's no good. Let's try again. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now we're going to take that G3P and put it into the mitochondria, and we're going to convert it into acetyl-CoA. Okay, and that's going to go through a cycle, the Krebs cycle. And it's going to make, here's the point, it's going to make lots of electron carrier molecules. So it's going to make NADH and FADH. And it makes two ATP. And this one made two ATP as well. Okay, now those electron carriers, and we did this on class, in class last week, those electron carriers are going to go to the electron transport chain. That's easy, right? The electron carriers go to the electron transport chain. So let's see if I can draw that for us. And the electron transport chain is just... phospholipids and proteins, just like the cell membrane. And the electron transport chain is always in a membrane. Let's see if I can get some phospholipids going here. So that stuff in between is phospholipids. Okay, so here we go. Watch. The electrons go down the electron transport chain and bind with oxygen to make water. So the electrons make the water. Okay, well in the meantime, the electrons are going through the electron transport chain. Hydrogen protons. Hydrogen protons are pumped into the cristae. And that makes a concentration gradient. The hydrogens are eventually pumped through ATP synthase, and that's what creates the 32 or 34 ATP. So, three steps. Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, 
electron transport chain and you get lots of ATP. So if you're thinking big picture, what's the big picture here? We break a molecule of sugar and we make ATP. So cellular respiration is where we break a molecule of sugar and we make ATP. Okay, so really today's lecture, now that you've reviewed it all, so it's all today's lecture is all about what if there's no oxygen? And so I actually drew this out so I could demonstrate this for you. If there's no oxygen, then only glycolysis can happen. Look, the Krebs cycle, nope, requires oxygen. The electron transport chain, nope, requires oxygen. So the electron transport chain and the Krebs cycle both require oxygen. Glycolysis, on the other hand, does not require oxygen. Okay, so now we're going to talk all about what if there's no oxygen. So we know now that none of this can happen. So we're actually going to erase all this because it can't happen and talk about instead of just cellular respiration, we're going to talk about anaerobic respiration. Okay, so now we have anaerobic respiration. Well, AN, what does that mean? It means without oxygen. So without oxygen, there's really only glycolysis. Okay, so Here's what happens. Watch this. You got your sugar molecule, and you're going to break it in two, into two G3Ps, just like before. Break it in two. Okay, but in order for you to do glycolysis again, so you have to do glycolysis, and then glycolysis again, and then glycolysis again, you have to take the G3Ps right here, and you have to convert them into something. Well, you can't convert them into acetyl-CoA, so you either have to convert them into one of two things. You convert them into either lactic acid or you convert them into, so that's like option one, or you convert them into alcohol. And I actually just noticed they're opposite on your notes, but that's okay. Okay, so it depends on what organism you are. We do lactic acid. Without the presence of oxygen in our muscles, we make lactic acid as a byproduct. And that's just an attempt to get energy. So you're like, glycolysis, that makes two ATP. Glycolysis, that makes two ATP. Glycolysis, that makes two ATP. Okay, so anaerobic respiration or fermentation will occur to free up that NADH so there's actually an NADH made here. To free up the NADH, watch me free it up. Ready, watch. Free it up. So to watch me free up the, the electron carrier to at least keep glycolysis going. Okay, so the first one is alcohol fermentation. This occurs in bacteria and yeast to convert the two pyruvates into ethanol by cutting off the CO2 and so circle the word CO2, because CO2 for the alcohol, CO2 and alcohol are both made. And filling up open bonds with hydrogen from the electron carriers. And this says beer, wine, and bread are made with this type of fermentation. Okay, so you take, um, you take some sort of, you, okay, let's take, you take grapes. You take grapes and you put bacteria with them, so it says bacteria or yeast, and then the bacteria or yeast are going to eat the grapes. And then, if there's no oxygen, they'll actually start making alcohol as a byproduct. And that's actually how you make wine. Okay, let's move on to lactic acid. Converts the pyruvate into lactic acid, so the either pyruvate or G3P. Actually, I want you to write that in. G3P or pyruvate. Okay, converts the pyruvate into lactic acid by breaking the double bond with oxygen, going to make a little amount of ATP, so the two ATP, 
to keep the cells alive. Okay, examples include cheese, yogurt, and muscle cramps. Okay, so these are organisms that don't have oxygen stored up. Either they don't want oxygen or they don't have it. Okay, the vocabulary word, faculative anaerobes, these are organisms that can perform both. But they, per faculative, they prefer aerobic, but they can stay alive without oxygen. Okay, so let's just, and then uh, we'll be done today. So not much. So if there's no oxygen present, it doesn't enter in the mitochondria. Write that down. If there's no oxygen, if there is no oxygen, the pyruvate does not enter the mitochondria. So write that down somewhere. Take a second and write that down. Okay. So here's your alcohol. It's going to free up that NADH. See, it's going to make it NAD plus again and make alcohol as a byproduct. Okay, and here's lactic acid. Free up that NADH. And it's going to make lactic acid. And you can see it says lactate over there. Okay. Negative feedback. I want you to write the definition down here. Negative feedback is, so negative feedback is when the product of a reaction, so negative feedback is when the product of a reaction stops the reaction from occurring. Okay, so tomorrow I want you to be able to write this down. Okay, maybe, maybe a little pop quiz on this. Okay, you, I want you to know what negative feedback is. Negative feedback is when the product of a reaction stops the reaction from occurring. Okay, let me show you what that means. You got glycolysis at the top. And then you've got the Krebs cycle. So here we have, looks like all of this is glycolysis. Here we have the Krebs cycle. And then here we have electron transport chain. Okay, what's the product of this whole story is ATP. So you have a whole bunch of ATP down here. So the, all these stars are ATP. Okay, so a whole bunch of ATP right here. Well, when you get enough ATP, the product of the reaction, and it, the picture actually shows it happening right here. When you get enough ATP, the product of the reaction stops... It says inhibits. The product of the reaction stops the reaction from occurring. So ATP is going to come up here and bind to the enzyme that does glycolysis. That enzyme name is phosphofructokinase. ATP is going to bond to that enzyme and stop it for just a second. That's good. So negative feedback is where the product of a reaction stops the reaction from occurring. Okay, so there's that enzyme again. All right, I hope this was helpful.